the starting grid for the final race of the championship. John McIntyre off the pole, the new championship leader, alongside Andy Booth, Eddie Bell from grid three, Wade Henshaw from four. Then follow on to Andrew Anderson and then Angus Fogg, one of the contenders for the championship. Matt Lockwood and the other man contention for the championship, Craig Beard. Yeah, more on Craig Beard after that big hit in the previous race. Scott McLaughlin and Nick Ross complete row number five. John Kenny lines up alongside uh, a quiet Kane Scott this weekend in the Fujitsu Ford. Then roll on to Timmy Edge on Andy Knight. Two very hard charges, another hard charge of Paul Manuel. Next door to him, of course, is David Hopper. Then we go back to row number nine, John Hepburn alongside Dean Perkins. Then it's Simon Richards and Christina Orr West. And completing the lineup for race number three, Hayden McKenzie, Gene Rollinson, and Martin Short. I believe Martin Short will not take this race start due to the damage in race number two. This championship is still up for grabs. John McIntyre in the box seat off the bowl, but look who's to his outside. It's Andy Booth. Yeah, look for Wade Henshaw there, guy. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, turn one. If they can get through turn one, then look for turn two, because that's where the action's going to happen. The championship can actually unfold right there. We are away, John McIntyre on board the start of race three for the BNC v the final race of the championship. Oh, oh Booth and Henshaw making contact for second and third. Fog with a fly out of the outside of Henshaw. Right around the outside, of course, it's a dry line at this part, so you can afford to do that. It's going to be a drag race. Wade Henshaw, he does not care about Angus Fogg's championship aspirations. He just wants to get in and mix it in with these guys. Now these guys are pioneers. Here we go. Here goes the guys out of pit lane. Scott McLaughlin is one of those as well in the super cheap hold. And Fogg gets back to third. I think Henshaw might have moved over for him because for the majority of that run up to the straight to two, Henshaw was actually in front of the LG Ford. So here we go. Where we go, the, the tree, or the, where all the trees are, the tree lines, that's the dry part. Of course, the open part where we are now, this is wet. So where is the first guy on wet, who we believe in the wet tyres? It's going to be Craig Beard. He is, uh, God, he's already up to 15th place, so... Man, this is so tender, these guys, these pioneers at the stage. Of course, there's the uh, debris flag we'll see on the left-hand side. It's indicating that this, the track has some kind of slippery material on it, whether it be oil, antifreeze, who cares? Either way, the, the flag is there. Craig Beard, he's played in road so far. Of course, Paul Manuel behind. Oh, there you go, Eddie Bell off, Wayne Henshaw off, Andrew Anderson. Yeah, Andy Booth was the first one, got sideways off that curve with the left rear. Matt Lockwood goes around in the number oh. three Holden, but manages to uh, avoid getting hit by anyone. Yeah. Timmy Edgell was the next guy that actually would have come around there and seen Matt Lockwood go sideways, so here we think we wasn't involved in that. But... Yeah, Matt's unsighted, trying to get back around and uh, right the number three. Henshaw and Bell. Here we go, you see that brief bag again, as James was alluding to. The teams have been cautioned. It's very slippery here through an earlier incident, one of the supporting races. So Angus Fogg chasing down Andy Booth. John McIntyre is your race leader, looking to take control and win his third BNCV8 championship. He has two to his name. So does Andy Booth, Kane Scott. Here's Angus Fogg trying to get a run here on Booth. Look how much drier it is on the front part of the track as Fogg gets a whole heap of curve on the apex at turn one, but he should have a pretty good exit run here on Booth. He Booth's is trying to crowd him down into the wall. Yeah, Booth, he can't move again. If he starts going to the right of the screen, as we see, he'll get in a bit of trouble for a, a double move. So he doesn't. He's making Angus work, certainly for second place. So Angus Fogg needs to get ahead of John McIntyre and have McIntyre probably finish third because there's 15 points difference between first and third, and Fogg's got to try and make up 11 points, but it's the other way. Here's the peak antifreeze replay off the start underneath the Hamilton Bridge, and there's the contact oh, look, between just, Henshaw and Henshaw Booth. Henshaw just right in the back of Booth. I don't know why you need to do that, especially at the start. If you just tuned in, you want to know where the rest of the field are. If you look to the left right now, you'll see them all in pit lane. Yeah, they're all stacked up in pit lane waiting for these guys to get through. So that was a big moment there for Andy Booth and another moment here off the curbs. Just a graphic demonstration of what happens when you're putting the power down. You hit those shiny curbs at the same time. That's three, turn five. Matt Lockwood, however, wasn't quite as lucky and he did go around in the number three Holden. Fog to the inside of Andy Booth, through to second. Now we know there's a lot of room on the outside here, so you can afford to lose, uh, sorry, going a bit fast and run wide. Booth's going to challenge him all the way through. Yeah, he's going to stay there. He's going to get the decision back. Jamie, sorry, mate. Now, if Angus can stay there, he's going to be in the upper hand again, coming through nine, which he can't. Booth did a good job there. He actually did give, give Angus a little bit of racing room. So Andy Booth proving to be the spoiler here at the moment, but uh, he's looking to try and conserve that fourth place finish overall in the championship. Eddie Bell's broken free from Wade Henshaw. Andy Knight. Now Andy Knight started from position 14. Angus Fogg locks up the rears and around goes the LG Ford. 
he be... gathers it back up. He didn't go completely around. No, he, look, he's got nothing to lose at this stage. He's 11 points back in the championship. So he has to throw everything at this, including the kitchen sink. That's exactly what we saw. Well, he's lost a spot to Eddie Bell. So that's dropped him back to the fourth position. Now, that was a big save because that was as far around as you could probably go without literally spinning the car. Here's the peak anti freeze replay. Just locks up the rears. Well, actually, Boothie went and locked the rears first, locked the fronts, and Angus thought, well, he's probably going to go wide here. Boothie managed to regather it. And, of course, Angus had already outbraked himself to that point. So you're right with what you say. He gathered pretty good and married on. But this man here, when he looks in the rear vision mirror and sees these guys scrapping, he's going to think to himself, thanks, guys, just making it that much easier for me. Well, Scott McLaughlin is absolutely charging forward in the super cheap hold, and he was one of those cars to start out of pit lane. He is up into the seventh position, and he's just set the fastest time to the first sector on this lap. And Craig Baird also, and he's not too far behind. Just a couple of positions, so Craig Baird on a charge. The guys on wet tyres at the moment are almost a second and a half quicker than the guys on slicks. Now, we're only lap three of 16. When we get to probably lap 10 when the circuit dries, those sports are going to be reversed. Can't ever think the guys that are going to persevere on slick tyres are going to be the big benefactors come the second half of this race. And you can see the difference with the cars on slicks. They're not pumping out anywhere near as much water as those guys that are on the treaded No, here's Eddie Bell. Tires. Actually, Eddie Bell's got in front of Andy Booth as well. So Another position change. Eddie Bell through to the second position. That's where he finished in race number two. Great end of the championship. The rest of it hasn't gone to plan as Angus Bond launches up the inside of Andy Booth. We've seen this before. Eddie Bell, if you're not careful, mate, you're going to get uh, probably kiss from Angus, but these two guys are so tied up in their own battle that Eddie's managed to pull a couple of car legs. Bond back to third. So again, he needs to be ahead of John McIntyre to have any chance of trying to win this championship, but McIntyre's got good pace. So there you go. Fastest man of the race so far, Craig Beard, currently third in the championship with all the work to do. John McIntyre leads from Eddie Bell with Angus Fogg in third at the quarter distance race three for the BNC V8s. Well, Mark, these guys on wet tyres are really making some progress. Scott McLaughlin and Craig Beard are the two fastest drivers on track. And in saying that, John McIntyre's just set the fastest split to sector one Would on this lap. Yeah, you're right. And we expect to see that, Jamie. Oh, Andy, Andy Knight. Knight. Learned nothing from the early part of the weekend. Still hitting the curves hard. Yeah, he's just damaged the right front split. Yeah, well, that's not going to work in his favour because uh, may get a mechanical black flag. The Angus Fogg running wide again, so he does all the hard work. Andy Knight was in the fifth position. Sorry, going back to what you're saying, we expect the guys on six to be fastest around sector one because that's where it's driest. McLaughlin. Go McLaughlin. Henshaw probably didn't see him, got out of his way, which is a smart thing to do. Scott McLaughlin is flying, remembering that Scotty won the last race in Taupo in the Super Cheap now, The youngest ever race winner in BNTV8. Sorry, mate, there is no love loss between Wade Henshaw and Craig Beard. We know that from early rounds of the championship. Craig Beard's on wets. Wade Henshaw's on dry. So what's he going to do here? Is he going to back himself? No. Andy mate. Knight's going to lose that front splitter if he's not careful. It's going to get jammed underneath the front of that yeah, race mate, car. He's, he's going to have to go anyway. into the pits. No, he's not. No, no. he's going to continue on. OK, Craig Beard. Now, he's going to go into the part of the track now with the slick tyre, which Wade Henshaw's on. It's going to work for him. Andy Knight is going to end up in the wall if he's not careful. He locks up yeah, the there fronts. you go. Uh, and just, that was lucky for Craig Beard. Yeah, the, uh, he would have had a uh, re resemblance of race two in... Young Martin Short T-Bait him in a very similar place. Martin Short, too much damage sustained in that clash. Andy Booth. And Angus Fogg. And uh, they both got back ahead of Eddie Bell. So John McIntyre with a 6.4 second lead. And again, McIntyre quickest to the first sector split on lap number six. Looking at the lap times, pick up the likes of Scott McLaughlin. His last lap was a 143.3. McIntyre doing 143.2s. Here's the peak anti freeze replay. Andy Knight getting that second tyre bundle through turn number four and dislodging another front splitter. Actually, Not one for the first time this weekend. One match dropped right off the Tommy monitor here into last place is Craig Beard. But now this is a replay of an earlier incident with Andy Knight, of course. Some flames starting to pump out of that, so... Knight breaks the splitter off. He just noses across the front of Craig Beard. But, yeah, you're right, Craig Beard has disappeared down the timing charts. This is what happens. Angus Fogg runs wide. Now, somewhere Eddie Bauer was, uh, has lost a lot of time because he was ahead of that gaggle of cars. Now he's actually behind them, so here we go. And Scott McLaughlin is right with 
Angus Fogg and Andy Boots and McLaughlin up into the fourth position, having started out of pit lane inside six laps. Haven't we seen this before, actually? This is a now, replay. Craig Baird, Craig Baird is definitely still out there, Mark. He's on screen in about the... The sixth position, six, yes, but he has disappeared off the timing monitors. So. Right, now this battle continues here with Andy Booth. Of course, this is probably for round honours for second place because Johnny McIntyre at the moment has the championship McIntyre's, wrapped up. McIntyre's just set the fastest lap of the race at 1.42.2. McLaughlin doing an identical time as this battle rages for second and third. Andy Booth and Angus Fogg. While these two are battling, John McIntyre is just simply disappearing up the road. He's out to an eight-second lead now over these two. So they're taking advantage of these guys battling. Now look at that graphic demonstration of the dry line that's forming. So those guys that are on wets, their advantage now probably only really limited to turn six, seven, eight, nine at this stage. And more laps we do, more corners are going to start working into favour of these guys on slicks. Ed McIntyre passed us to the first sector with a 39.9, the first driver into the 39 to that first sector. And look at the time that differences between Foggy and Booth over the last three or four laps. Foggy's got a run Fogg's on got an inside run. Great racing, you've got to say, Mark, but Can I don't know it? that Foggy really needs this right now. Can he make it stick? Oh, he's using every inch of real estate he's got. Advantage back to Boothy, of course. Each other not a racing route, but he's got the third racing line, of course. And here comes Scott McLaughlin as Fogg again just about goes around. Does. One man that has dropped off our monitor is actually Eddie Bauer. We saw him have a very strong first part of the race. He's in blue, so whatever happens to poor old Eddie, but McLaughlin is just picking these guys off at will. Craig Beard's been released from uh, Wade Henshaw now, so the next man on his side, of course, is a guy he's battling for the championship with is Angus Fogg. Yeah, so Craig Beard up into the fifth position. He also started out of pit lane like McLaughlin, who locks up the left front into turn one. He's actually slowed it down. It got to the apex, all-important apex, of course. It got a good drive, so Angus, he'll be very strong at this part of the track, because as you'll see, everybody, it's nice and dry here. Angus Fogg trying to get around Scott McLaughlin. Ross is doing a good job there too, one of the fastest times, 30, uh, 36, sorry, 37.9, so certainly not lacking the car speed at this stage of the weekend. John McIntyre out in front, he's got a 9.6 second advantage, so he's extended over the last couple of laps, that gap was down to about eight and a half seconds, maintaining the race lead and the championship lead. Scott McLaughlin is doing everything he can, looking for every ounce of water to help cool those tyres off. As you'll see the other man in the United Video Car, Craig Beard, he's not doing that. He's just sticking to the racing line. He doesn't care about trying to pull the tyres off because he knows in a couple of laps those guys are going to be suffering anyway, so why prolong it? Wayne Henshaw's got a run on him here from looking down the inside, of course, but where Wayne Henshaw does this, of course, Jamie's on the racing or the dirty line, sorry. So uh, the advantage is actually not in his favour right now. There you go, look for the crossover. It's obviously dry enough now with a slick tyre. It's definitely coming into a zone. There you Angus go. Angus Fogg's got back ahead of Scott McLaughlin. I was about to say McIntyre with the positions on track had a 32-point lead over Angus Fogg. That's just changed and narrowed back to 27 points. But Foggy needs to be ahead of John McIntyre to be in it with a chance of winning this championship. There's Richard Field there with the radio up next to his ear. So McIntyre, he is way quicker. He was two seconds quicker than Scott McLaughlin. First of those drivers on the wet tyres that started out of pit lane. Did quarter, didn't we see Brando out halfway through those guys who were suffering? So, it was a gamble worth taking because if Mother Nature had to play their part and continued raining, and they would have come into their own. That's the seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth positions with Andy Knight currently scored in the tenth position. Got a great start, but he's just been falling back, just struggling with front end grip, obviously. It's Craig Beard now. You can see that gap. He's really starting to fall off weight. Henshaw and Henshaw sideways goes past McLaughlin, but McLaughlin gets him back. Just got in a little bit too hot and couldn't stop the easy way car options forward into one. Of course, the grip is changing every lap they're doing. It's getting drier and drier, and as if these guys keep forging into the quarters, they think, well, I reckon I can break another metre and a half, two metres. Now, it doesn't sound much to everybody on TV, but trust me, it is an eternity. When you're in one of these cars at this stage of the race, the tyres are hot, the brakes are hot. It's been a long weekend. Andrew Anderson's got a run on manual coming through three. If he can stay there, he'll take the position because uh, Paul will know to back out of this. Smart enough too, which is good. Timmy Edgell is having a good race three. Just hearing how the rest of the weekend's gone for him. 
So John McIntyre with a 26-point lead in the championship of the race lead. Angus Fogg's just set the fastest lap at a 135.3. Oh. Andrew Anderson. Oh, oh he's got hit. the wall off the exit. It's ripped the right front wheel off the ITM Holden. Okay, now depending where he parks his car, this could bring the safety car out, regather everybody up, and it could be game on. Now, what's he going to do with this? Is he going to park it out of the way? Oh, oh big David, hit. Hopper. David Hopper. That's at turn three. That's where Paul Dumbrell went into the beginning of the weekend in the V8 Supercar qualifying okay, mate, now session. another interesting fact, Jamie. If they red flag this race, the race is over. They've gone past the 75% mark, 16, 16 laps. So lap 12 was the threshold there. So what will they do? Two cars stranded out on the racetrack. The safety final car race is out. MCV8. The safety car definitely is out on the track. Go. Look, that was a big hit. We know that right there. Now, what caused it to break? Oh, okay, hitting the tyres. So it's broken first and oh, then ploughed him into the concrete. Yeah, now what happened to David Hopper somewhere else either way? Yeah, it was further so down the track behind this at turn number three. Very big hit there by Andrew Anderson. We're just praising how well he was doing. Just as Angus Fogg had set the fastest lap of the race at a 33.9. Here's another look at it from front on. Hits the oh, tyre stack, breaks yeah. the right front suspension and into the concrete. Paul Manuel did a great job to avoid hitting Andy. The steering, uh, the steering arm had clapped to that stage with the, the kiss into the tyres. And of course the rest of it just catastrophic. Here's David yeah. Hoppers and he's gone oh, straight through the hit. paint. Yeah. He's just misjudged the entry to three. He's just got over the curve, and as we heard from Hayden McKenzie earlier on, when you hit that blue paint, you just accelerate like there's no tomorrow. Now oh, the oh, what's going on here? Wade Henshaw has managed to collect the rescue. Now, that will take a very, very dim view of that because the drivers should be driving within themselves. So that does not happen now. Henshaw was fourth. Here we go. Here's the peak antifreeze replay. Oh, dear. Oh, mate, that's a big hit. It's one of the biggest hits of the weekend. Well, that truck's probably weighing the better part of three, three and a half tonne, and it uh, just about managed to pick that up. You just be thankful there was actually no one standing there, but however he got there, we don't know. Red, oh, flag. red flags. Championship, Johnny McIntyre. That is it. John McIntyre wins title number three. I'm not too sure if the team's on the radio yet. Wait for the reaction. Look at his face, mate. He's this just been told. Congratulations, Johnny. Well done, team. There's the, the uh, Richard Field, their team, celebrating down in pit lane. Three-time BNC V8 champion, John McIntyre. Look at the emotion. Well, what an end to this championship. John McIntyre takes the win, the red flag stopping the race prematurely and taking out his third championship. Andy Booth finishing second, a disappointed Angus Fogg. Well, he fought all the way to the end, but it was race two that really cost him. Wade Henshaw is scored in the fourth position ahead of Scott McLaughlin, followed by Craig Beard, Nick Ross, Andy Knight, Tim Edgell, and Paul Manuel. But it's congratulations to the Johnny McIntyre show.